today we are continuing in our altered book slash bullet journal series finishing up September and starting to set up for October also I have some freebies for you to download for October and I will also be introducing a new digital autumn journaling kit which I will be using some of the pages for for my spreads today welcome this is Barbara so this is a collaboration with Joey Defee, who recently put up a video where she decorated the outside and inside cover of her altered book. So I'll put the link for that video in the description box below for you. So please go check that out if you're enjoying the altered book concept. So Joey will have another video out soon where I think she will be decorating a page and a mini calendar and also do some writing. Also, Tina from Shabby Dabby Duda has joined our little group. I'm so excited. And she's working on an altered book where she paints her pages and makes some ephemera for it. So I believe that video will be out this coming week as well. So I will link Tina's channel below for you as well so you can be on the lookout for that video. And in case you have missed my first two videos of this altered book series, you can find a link to my playlist for these below the video as well. So let's get into it. So this is my September section. So this is where my September starts. I have my 10K tracker and I think I've done pretty well with my steps. I'm quite proud of myself. So this is the 10K limit of what I'm trying to reach every day. And I think most days I have succeeded. So happy with that. So then this was my September overview where I keep a, a keep track of my videos that come out. So I know when which video comes out. Then I have my weeklies, which are all the same. So I just have my weekly calendar on this side and I have a to-do list and a grateful part here and then I you know obviously decorate that up a little bit and as you can see for September I kept the colors really neutral and I was writing in pencil which I actually really like because I love the overall calm feel of these pages here moving towards the end of September I am getting more into a little more colors here so this is the week we are currently in when I'm filming this and this is where we are now so what I want to do is I need to make a weekly for the last week of September where October already starts and then I want to make a summary page for September and then I want to go ahead and make the first pages for October so what I will be doing as always I will be tearing out seven pages and by doing this you see or maybe you don't see <laughs> this book is still staying pretty flat and I am so I started this mid July so September August so two and a half months in and it's still pretty flat. So this is working really well with taking out seven pages for this book. But please keep in mind if you do this altered book concept and you're just tearing out pages randomly like I am, you need a book that has glued in pages rather than sewn in pages. Because if you do this with sewn in pages, your book is going to fall apart. So if you haven't chosen a book yet and you want to do this, please make sure there are glued in pages. This is a Reader's Digest. Maybe you can find this in these sort of books in a Goodwill or secondhand store or something, which is where I found mine. So I'm going to be taking out seven pages, as I said. So I'll do three together. And of course, I'm keeping this to make ephemera with. And then I can do four together. So we've taken out seven. And now I'm simply going to take my glue stick and I'm gluing these two together because I want to hide the part here where I tore out the pages. <clears throat> and it also makes it more 
sturdy of course so I'm going to be sure to cover the whole surface all the way to the edge of my page this book has become my brain <laughs> I am really using this on a daily basis this is where I put my appointments my to do's and and what I'm grateful for and I track my steps as you saw so this is really where I keep everything and where I keep organized and where I have my mindfulness parts of the day where I just sit back and, and think about all the beautiful things I have in my life. And I, I just take a moment to document those because it just makes me appreciate them more. So now I'm just Doing that together, I'm just trying to find my phone folder and all my mess on my desk. So I want to be sure to burnish it down from both sides to make sure it's adhered really well. And now we can work on this. So I want to start off by putting in a background and I'm going to just use some misprints from when I was working on my autumn kit. Maybe, maybe this would be a time to show you my autumn kit. So we have two ephemera pages. So this is one. So you have some tags here, different shapes. We have a few word definitions, which are fall related. And we have two tuck spots here. And on this one, we have some round images. We have some like labels or cards. And then we have two corner tuck spots here. And then there are, I believe, eight different background pages. So that's one, two, and I really love this deer here. Three. They all have music, various music papers in the background. These are also really lovely. Four. Oh, this is upside down. Some butterflies here. Five. Love this one too. Six. And this is more of a generic one with butterflies. You can use that any time of year. Seven, and then we have a completely neutral one, which is just music sheet background. So that's number eight. So it's 10 pages in total. So when I was just doing some test prints, I print some of these smaller, which now come in handy because, I mean, they're still too big for my book, but I can definitely use these to cover my my book pages but if you don't want to use pages to cover your book pages you could of course just paint them you just wait for tina's video where she will hopefully show us how she paints her pages but maybe you have some coffee or tea dyed paper that you just put over because as lovely as the old book pages are i think they're too busy to actually work on for me at least they are too busy so what i'm gonna do is i'm going to yeah i'll probably take this one and this one and cut them down to fit my page size so that i can just cover the whole page with them so i've cut these out and as you can see i've just cut them a little smaller than my book page and I'm going to be gluing these on just with some glue stick again and by the way I'd like to just express a huge huge thank you to anyone who has bought something from my new shop already I, I am absolutely speechless with how generous you guys are and that you seem to be liking my digital so i'm over the moon i had no idea if it was gonna work if people would be interested in my product so i'm lost for words you guys have been amazing and obviously without you i couldn't be doing what i'm doing so huge 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 thank you to all of you and when you glue these in again be sure to 
burnish them down well so that you don't have any waves or bubbles in your sheet. So now that I have my backgrounds on, I can start on this side to put my last weekly for September. So to keep the same theme that I had going through all of September, you see I always used the same paper here for my weeklies. I'm going to be using the same paper which is from this, which I found at my Goodwill for 30 cents. And this is what people used to, or students used to use in school to take notes or even to write homework. So I'm going to be tearing one of these pages out. And I love this because you probably can't see it on the camera, but it has a beautiful creamy patina. It is not your bright white. So I love this. And I'm just going to measure for this to be the same size as I had before because that seemed to work pretty well and since I have some lines to guide me I'm just going to cut this with my scissors and like I've also done for all the other pages in September I'm going to draw my lines to separate the days with this brown colored pencil so I will just mark where these lines need to be. And if you don't have a previous weekly yet, if you're just starting out, then just divide the height of your page by seven for seven days in the week. And then you'll know where to put your lines. Now I'm going to ink up my edges with my vintage photo to just continue with the vintage look that I have and to also have some continuity with the way the weekly looks I will again be using the stamps that I used here for the weekdays and the date like this so I have this stamp set from Paper Poetry which I got locally you can get tons of stamp sets probably in your craft store or Amazon or Etsy. These are just your regular stamp sets that you have for planners. You have the name of the month, name of the week. I have two different versions here, name of the week, and then I have numbers for the days. And I'm also going to be using my Memento Espresso Truffle Ink because it is not quite as dark as the black. You can of course also handwrite these if you are happy with your handwriting or if you know how to do some beautiful calligraphy. That can be a very zen thing to do. And before I put my stamp away, after I've used them, I just stamp them a few times on a scrap paper to get rid of the extra ink. I don't do anything else to clean them, to be honest. I am lazy and it seems to work fine. I don't see why I need to actually clean the stamps every time. That would be too much hassle in my eyes. <laughs> so I just made a mistake while stamping. <laughs> September only has 30 days and not 31. So this 31 is wrong. So I need to try to fix that because I don't wanna do everything over again. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut a little piece of the same paper yeah, and then I'll just stick it over the other one rather than trying to put a white out or something on it, which you would see a lot. I think this you can see less if you manage to line it up more or less. <laughs> okay, it was a horrible stamp. I pressed too hard, but basically now it's a one. Good enough. <laughs> this doesn't need to be... A work of art in my eyes this just kind of needs to be functional and not look hideous <laughs> that that's the standard I have for my weekly <laughs> at least I noticed before I stamped all the way down <laughs> it can always be worse 
this is the most tedious part i must admit you are much faster writing this by hand but i really don't like my handwriting i tried it at the beginning of the book and i really don't like the way it looks so i would rather put in the effort <laughs> and stamp away and even that doesn't always work as you can see <laughs> So now we can glue this onto our last page for September. All right, so we have that. So this is, is going to be where I put things like when I film and edit videos, when I have appointments, like maybe to meet friends or when I have a Zoom call or I need to go see my bookkeeper or whatever. Um, maybe even my walk with my BFF. All these things go into my calendar. So then we're going to be making a page like this. So I want one segment for my to-dos and one segment for my grateful part. And then of course the fun thing is to decorate that up. So first we need to find some paper that I can use to write down my lists and everything. So I have here, um, if you see my previous videos, you know this, I've put together this ephemera storage book. I don't unfortunately have a separate video for this. I made this off camera, but I used my cinch spiral binding machine and an old book com cover, which just happens to have my name on it. <laughs> And I made some envelopes, super simple envelopes, uh, just by hand without using any tools or anything, but just by having flaps and then gluing in the flaps and just folding up the paper and then just making the holes with my cinch machine. And this is where I keep my ephemera that I want to use specifically for this altered book. And while I'm going through this now, I'm noticing that when I filled this up with ephemera to use, I was still in July. And if you look here in July, I was having very, very colorful spreads, which is fine for summer. I mean, look how colorful. <laughs> this is not, this doesn't scream October to me. <laughs> so the color palette has changed. Even in August, I, well, I was gonna say I muted it down just a tad. <laughs> Still use the colorful butterflies here, but you see here I went more and more into the neutrals. And then, so that was August. And now for September, I completely went into the neutrals and then slowly, slowly, I'm getting back into having a little bit of color here, not too much. So I think what I'm gonna have to do is switch out the ephemera that I put in here because a lot of it is just too colorful for the fall. So I think I will need to do that because this is supposed to be really easy to just take out stuff and use them, which now isn't working as well because probably half the things in here are too colorful for me. So this was the envelope where I keep my bits that are useful for, for writing these to-dos and the grateful part and like that. So I just wanna choose something from there that is neutral. I have used both of these in the past. I don't want anything pink. This border is a bit too big for me. Maybe I will use one of these, but cut it out. I don't want this, this wide border. What else? I have used this, but I still love it. Actually, that goes really well. So maybe I'll just use these two. Put these back in my ephemeral book. And then I will, what I'll do is I'll cut this down pretty much the same size as this one. Mm -hmm. 
These here, both of these came from the Your Creative Studio vintage stationery boxes. I will link them down below for you as well. You can subscribe to monthly boxes and there's various subscriptions. Like you can do a few months at a time and they sell out very quickly. They seem to be getting more and more popular. I have loved each and every one of those boxes. I, I have a lot of unboxings on my channel as well. Maybe I will list that playlist for you in, as well in case you just want to look at what those boxes are like. So now I have two squares to work with. I like that. And maybe this one actually, I will even cut around this border just to make it a little more interesting, I guess, and to save some space because we don't have a huge amount of space on this page. And I will ink around both of these. And by the way, I forgot to say, I have also inked around both of my background pages. I think this one is good for the to-dos and this one is good for the gratefulness. Although this one says daily plan, but I do kind of like these lines for my to-dos. I think that's good. So now I want to stamp the words grateful for here and to do or something of that sort on this one. And I don't want to stamp it directly because I know myself and I will most likely mess it up. <laughs> so I will stamp it on a cutoff of my background pages. So I will just move this aside. And I have this little stamp. I believe I got this maybe at Michael's or some other craft store in California. And it's a really cute store, a uh, store. Yeah, it's a cute store as well. But it's a really cute stamp because it has a lot of words that you can use like for planners and stuff. So it has like goals and reminder and today important top priority to do so lots of things that you can use as a to-do list and i think i'll use this one which says no actually i'm changing my mind i'm using the one that says this week and i'm again going to use the espresso truffle yeah so this is what it looks like and I'm also going to use my 12 digit rollable stamp, which is very handy for stamping words. It has letters and numbers. So I really like using this. I, I will link this for you as well. And if you use this, please always stamp first on a scrap paper before you stamp it on your project, if you wanna stamp it directly on your project because these letters need to be lined up and sometimes you don't see well if they are lined up or not just by looking like this. So you have to see what it looks like stamped. Plus maybe you misspelled a word, which has happened to me as well. So in this case, I can just do it on my scrap paper and it actually, I mean, it's crooked, but if I cut it out right, it would be okay. I'll just try it one more time and try to stamp it straight. Yeah, that's a little better. Now I can just cut these out and then glue them where I want to glue them. Maybe play around with them a little bit. So that's the advantage of having them on little pieces of scraps rather than stamp, uh, stamping them directly on there because now I can really play around with them well without committing to anything yet. <laughs> so throughout September I have been using mushrooms on I think all of my weekly spreads. Nope, I lied. This one actually doesn't. Look at that, I had some stickers that I wanted to use. But most of the pages have mushrooms, so I'll see if I want to continue with mushrooms as elements. So I will use some of these that I've already torn out. These are also from my shop. Don't want anything red. I've had that on the previous page. This is of course the best part of doing this whole journal because I think this is the most fun to figure out what, what your decorations are gonna be. These are all a bit big. I do think he's really cute. <laughs> Maybe I use him. And 
I also really like this guy. I could put him like this. Keep it simple. And then maybe we add something underneath it. I remember I have some doily stickers from one of the Your Creative Studio boxes. Yeah, I have them here. Maybe we could add some of those. Lately, I'm trying to use my stickers a lot more because I haven't been good with using them, but these are, these are perfect for backgrounds. So there's this cute lace border. We could add that underneath here. Maybe cut that down a little. Yep. And then the bottom one, maybe we use a round one. We could use this, this one here. Yep. I like that. So I will also ink up the mushrooms and then I'll start gluing things down. So I think I'll cut down this lace a little bit to be the exact height of my note paper. That is so cute. Okay, now I'm just wondering if we want to maybe add some lace underneath this, like some real lace. I'm thinking maybe this one would be really cute. I bought these at a craft flea market like two years ago, I think. Oh, I already glued this down. That was not smart. Why did I do that? Well, I think I can still add it. We'll of course cut it down. So first I'll cut it to the right height. And then I'll cut all of that off. And lastly, we add our mushroom. And then, of course, we need to add our title. So this was the one for the to-dos. So we need to add the this week somewhere. So either we just put it right on top here, put it on this side. Then I don't lose that spot on there. Yep, I think that's what I'll do. And now I need to do the grateful part. And I think this grateful, I will just put right over the part where it says daily plan so that there is no confusion. That fits perfectly. And then we put this cute one down. How adorable are these? And our mushroom. Again, should we maybe add some lace? Maybe the same lace? Let's see what that would look like. Yep, let's do that. I'll only use two of these. So this now is a page which is a mixture of productivity for the to-dos and mindfulness for the grateful. Again, I love that this has a very calm feel to it, yet it has a little, a little speck of neutral colors there. Now we can move on to the next page. So we turn the page. Again, I'm tearing out seven pages. Again, we will glue these together. And this time as background papers, I will be using the one from my autumn kit that I introduced before. And I'm just gonna again, cut this down to be a little smaller than my pages. And I can use one for both of these. So I'll just cut this down. As I'm gluing these in my book, I'm also trying to be mindful in this part because of course, decorating is more fun, but this is also 
can be really relaxing and calming, especially the smoothing of the wrinkles, the sound the bone folder makes gliding over the paper, the satisfaction of smoothing the paper out. I'm really trying my best to enjoy every single step of making this altered book rather than just trying to do it quickly and to try to pass over these parts which aren't maybe as creative. This page on the left will be my page for my September summary, similar to what I've done here for August. So it's just again one piece where I can write. I will write September sum summary and then I'll have some decorations around it. I will again take my ephemera book and check my first envelope to see if there's anything I want to use from here. I still kind of love these. Even though I've used it before in September, I just really think they're so cute. I will use another one. I've inked around the edges again. And now I want to frame it again a little bit to make the background more interesting by using some of my washi. So this is my washi drawer. Now I just want to look for some neutrals that will work with these colors. I kind of wanted to blend in, but not too much. <laughs> Always love using this one, which came in the Sora Aksan Bento stationery box. <laughs> I will link that unboxing for you as well. It is absolutely phenomenal. Japanese stationery in a bento box. Then I love this neutral one. I got this locally. It is an MT brand. I will also use this one. I got this one from a store in Germany. Don't know what brand it is. If I find this, I will link it as well. That might be enough actually. Let's see how far we get with that. So let's just start by putting down some washi just underneath the edges. I'll zoom you in a little bit more. Just framing it. If you don't have washies, you can of course also do this with scraps of paper and you just glue them down. I've done that many times as well. Now we still need the heading. These can be quite fiddly to deal with. So if you have big fingers, this might not be the best solution because these wheels to turn them, they are so close to each other so when you turn one, it could easily be that you turn the other one as well. It takes getting used to. But I'm happy because you have as many letters as you want as many times as you need them. Let's see if I was able to line them up well enough. That can be fiddly as well. But if you're not such a perfectionist, then it's not a big deal. Let's see, I have plenty of scrap paper, so if I mess up, I can keep stamping. It's okay, could be better. I'll just do it maybe one more time. Try to raise the P a little bit. This is ridiculous what I'm doing. <laughs> and now I realize I forgot the B. It says September. <laughs> okay, September. <laughs> See, it's always good to stamp it on a scrap first. That is a long word. You don't realize it until you have to stamp it. <laughs> I'm just gonna take this. <laughs> That's good enough. And now we need summary. Only took two tries for that one. <laughs> I have cut them out and inked them up. 
And now let's add them to the page. Oops, maybe not upside down. <laughs> And I do want some more decorations down here because this is way too empty here. So I'm gonna look through my ephemera from my new autumn kit and see if there's anything I wanna use from here. I have cut everything out and I've just printed it on regular copy paper. This is the corner tuck spot, but obviously I'm not gonna do corner tuck spots here, but I might just use this image here. I like this one as well that says fall. That's a good one. And there's also this stag, which I really love with the lace underneath. Or maybe I just, because I don't wanna use them as tags as they are, I just want the images. So I'm just going to tear around these images, both of these, and not use them as tags. So I've turn, torn them out and inked them up. So they're going to be some collage. So they're gonna serve as collage pieces. Maybe underneath we put some of the original book text. What I'm really loving about this altered book so far is that I can see the change of the seasons in it. I love that. So I started in summer, everything was very colorful and flower, you know, lots of flowers and butterflies. And now that we're going into the winter, now we're in autumn, the book reflects that with the colors, with the images. And I really, really love that. This is from a print from a ledger paper. I'm not sure where this is from. Always want torn edges. So maybe here. How about some vintage music paper? Okay, so that covers that. So I will just glue those down and see how to continue. I have the background glued down and I don't know, I'm just, I'm missing something. I don't know what it is. Maybe it needs some more washi underneath. I have this beige grid one. I might be able to link this one for you as well. Did some good to it. I'm just gonna glue it down. I don't know what else to do, to be honest. Not my best collage. It's fine, it's not so bad. <laughs> so the next two pages I want to create are going to be my 10K step tracker and my October monthly layout. So these are my two freebies that you can download below. In the description box, you will find a link to these as PDFs. So one is this October overview, and one is this 10K step tracker, if, if you are so inclined to track your steps. I think they want the October spread first, so I'm going to trim around that. I have designed this in an Excel program. So if you happen to be good with Excel, then you can just design your own to fit your own needs. If, if this monthly doesn't work for you. Or you can just, of course, hand draw it. But yeah, that seemed like too much work. So doing it in Excel for me was a lot easier. So I'm just gonna glue this down. Now I could of course decorate this page up further, but I actually don't want to because this is very busy already and I'd like to keep this very calm. Once again, I have torn out seven pages and I will again now glue these together. I kind of like doing this as I'm working in the book rather than doing it all at the beginning because if I would do it all first, that would thin out the book too much and then it would be a lot harder to work in. But this way it works really well because I always have this very thick base to work on. For these two backgrounds, I have again chosen some papers, some background papers from my autumn kit. So that way everything matches up that I will use for October. 
But again, you can just use some coffee dyed paper or whatever you have that might be muted enough for you to have as a background or you just paint them as I said, like Tina does. And one thing I also forgot, a whole page <laughs> I forgot, because you see, I always like doing an intro page for the month. So this was my intro page for September. It always has a quote on it. And of course, I need a tab. I always like having a tab at the beginning of the month so that I can easily find it. So that those are two things I still need to do. So next then would be, ideally my intro page for October would have been here. So one of these needs to be my 10K tracker and one of them needs to be my October intro page. And I guess it makes sense to have the intro page here and then have the tracker here. As of course, the days are getting shorter and windier and rainier and darker in general, it's going to be hard to keep up with my steps. October will hopefully still be okay. But as we go into November, December, January, February, those are the really tough months. So then we'll see how committed I am. <laughs> I'm worried. <laughs> I have another planner stamp set here with the months and I'm going to try this October one. Again, I got this stamp set in the States in one of the wonderful craft shops. Yep, that is very nice. So I again have my ephemera here for trying to decide what to do with the decoration for my cover page. Oh, maybe this, oh, this is good. So for example, I could give this October a nice little frame. I like that. Just to make it stand out a little bit more. I have some word definitions here that I really enjoy. So one is rustle, it's a verb to make a soft muffled crackling sound. I really like that. And then we have three small ones with breezy, pleasantly windy, then crisp of the air or the weather, pleasantly dry and cold or nippy, I love that word, I've never heard that before, informal of the weather, chilly, rather cold. <laughs> I also would love to have this one here. I just really love this dough. And maybe I will again tear this out. I think I'm gonna use this autumn tag. Maybe put that like this. And then maybe slide this underneath kind of connect the two. Maybe I will tear this, then I can use the top part as well. So we see one corner here, and then we can see one corner there. That kind of just connects everything. I've glued everything down, and I'm now I'm just adding the nippy on the bottom here. So there's the October intro page. So I think I'm pretty much set up now for the start of October anyway. And I'm going to continue then by doing the same thing and I'm just gonna do weeklies. Maybe I will change the layout a little bit, I don't know. But it's beautiful outside. I need to take advantage of the beautiful September weather and do my 10,000 steps for today. I hope this was helpful. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Love you guys. Mwah, mwah.